Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Wrestling Man's Retro Review. This is the only place where all costume videos are going to get their own review. Now for those of you who are new to this YouTube page, I'll briefly explain the retro review. Every once in a while, you, the viewers, have the opportunity to vote for the next Coliseum Home Video to be reviewed right here. Whichever one gets the most votes is the one that gets reviewed. And I tell you at the end of this video if you should go and try to find it or just leave it alone. Well, um, this review today... Um, uh, close, another close vote. Um, if you remember the last review that I did, we had a tie, so I was the tie breaker. Um, this one was not a tie. This was a very close vote. And I, I got to tell you, ever since I've started this about a year and a half ago, it seems like the specialty videos have kept winning and winning and winning these vote or you know these votes from you guys. For me to do reviews on and this one is no exception so today's review is WWF grudge matches and this is actually one of the first videos that the WWF and Coliseum video put out in 1986 so this was before WrestleMania 2 this video is hosted by none other than Gorilla Monsoon and he talks about basically what a grudge match is. And I don't think I need to explain it anymore. So let's dive right into the action. The opening match on this video cassette is a heavyweight title match. Hulk Hogan puts the belt on the line against the magnificent Morocco with Mr. Fuji in his corner. Now I gotta tell you. This was a good match. I'm not gonna lie. This was a very, this was a good match to watch as a fan because, you know, there's no stalling involved. There's no, you know, slow parts. It's just go 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 from beginning to end. And one of the cool things about this match is, this is one of the rare occasions where Hulk Hogan is wearing all white. He does not have the yellow and red on in this match. It's all white. Um, it has a very interesting ending to the match. Hogan hits the leg drop, gets the three. However, Mr. Fuji put Morocco's foot on the bottom rope, so the referee discounted the three count. Match continues, and then Morocco throws soda in the, throws salt in the eyes of Hulk Hogan, thus getting himself disqualified. Hogan wins and retains the title. Now something that's very interesting about that match is we never saw we never saw the first match that they had in Madison Square Garden. We see the second one here. The only way you could see the conclusion to that rivalry is on a collector's series tape. It's not on, you know, like, Best of the WWF. It's not in, you know, one of the personality videos. It's not in another specialty video. You could only find it in a collector series video, which um, I'll probably do down the line in the, in the upcoming future. So then we go to one of two rivalries, one of two feuds that gets multiple segments. Terry Funk against the Junkyard Dog. Now this first match um, was on, I think, All-Star Wrestling or Championship Wrestling. I don't remember the name of the show. It doesn't really matter. And this one is just a fight, just like the first one. This one is a straight-up fight. However, the ending is very interesting because as the Junkyard Dog is about to brand Terry Funk, in comes Terry's brother, Dory Funk Jr., hits him with a boot, and the match ends. And then Dory and Terry hold his arms, holds the junkyard dog's arms, 
Well, Jimmy Hart, who lost his shirt, by the way, so you can see his muscles, you know, kicks him and attacks him before some of the other guys rescue him. And it's very weird that they refer to Dory as Dory Funk because he ends up being called Hoss Funk. So, you know, it just, it just sounds weird that, you know, in this situation he's referred to by his real name instead of Hoss Funk. And then we get the other match between the two on Saturday night's main event. Um, this is the one in Hershey, Pennsylvania, Junkyard Dog against Terry Funk. Um, for like the first five minutes of this match, it's all Junkyard Dog. All Junkyard Dog. And then towards like the last minute or two, you know, it goes back and forth, back and forth. The match ends when Terry Funk hits the JYD with the megaphone, knocks him out, gets the three count, gets the win. Then he tries to brand the Junkyard Dog, but blocks it, and he gets knocked out. And then JYD gets Jimmy Hart, pulls him into the ring, and brands Jimmy Hart in his red underwear. Yes, I'm literally telling you the truth, his red underwear. Boy, the good old days of wrestling. Good old days. So anyway, our next grudge match is Bruno San Martino against Ivan Koloff from the 1970s. Now, this is where I have a little bit of a problem. In this match, Gorilla Monsoon refers to Ivan Koloff as the champion at this match, which is wrong because Bruno San Martino was champion. This was during Bruno's second reign. So, you know, that was a mistake, but, you know, I'm not going to kill Gorilla Monsoon, God bless his soul, over something like that. But, um, this match sees Bruno bleed, and there is a lot of blood in this video um, tape. I think the only two um, matches, or the only two rivalries that we don't see any blood in is Terry Funk and Junkyard Dog, and I'm sure a lot of you are surprised because it's Terry Funk, and the last segment, which I'll get to in a little bit. So Bruno is cut open, he goes crazy, he beats up Ivan Koloff, um, and then Bruno hits the referee. I'm not sure if it was by accident or not. Um, and then the wrestlers come out, try to separate him. I think Ivan got declared the winner by disqualification. I couldn't quite hear because Gorilla Monsoon was talking over it, saying that Ivan Koloff was the WWF champion and Bruno was trying to get the belt back. So then we go to our other rivalry that gets more than one segment. Tito Santana against Greg the Hammer Valentine. It starts off with Greg Valentine winning the Intercontinental title from Tito Santana, although be it in controversial fashion. Then, after the match, he puts the figure four leg lock on Santana and injures him and puts him on the show. Then we see a series of short clips of Tito Santana in the hospital. Now, he has sunglasses on him. He's inside the hospital. He's got sunglasses on. And he's like, um, I'm here in the hospital. Uh, doctor said that uh, there, there's a ligament in my knee. Uh, it's not so bad. Um, and they're going to have, they're going to perform surgery on me. It all will hurt well. So it sounds like Tito is already drugged up from the medicine already. So they show Tito going into the operation room. They see the doctors going into the operation room, having their hands all washed, you know. And they don't show you the actual footage of the surgery being performed. So that's good. So you don't have to worry about, you know, the little kids seeing a body part, you know, the way it is. So then after that, we go back to Tito Santana, who's now in a chair with his sunglasses on going, Well, the doctor said that uh, there's a little bit more tear in the ligament than they thought, but they fixed it, and I'll be healed up. And Greg Valentine, when I get back, I'm coming for your belt. I'm coming to kick your butt. 
Ariba. That's how he sounded, folks. I'm not kidding. That's how he sounded. So then we go to, I guess you can say, the finale. This is the finale of the feud. Uh, Intercontinental title on the line inside a 15-foot high steel cage, Baltimore, Maryland, the site. Um, and now at this point in time, Greg Valentine is managed, almost said hosted, is managed by Jimmy Hart. So you got Santana and Valentine, Baltimore, Maryland, inside a steel cage for the belt. Um, and this is a very interesting steel cage match. It's not the greatest steel cage match of all time, um, but it's a decent cage match. Although I really like the ending to the match. Santana climbs out of the cage. Valentine is near the door. He goes to the door, you know, to get out. Santana sees this. He kicks the door into Valentine's face, knocks Valentine down. Santana jumps off the cage, wins the match, becomes the new Intercontinental Champion, and then Valentine destroys the belt after the match. So then we go to our next match, Bruno San Martino against Superstar Billy Graham. And you know what? This is a retro review, which is completely different from the video I made a month ago. So you know what? I'm not going to put my personal opinion on him in this review. This is the retro review. So anyway, Superstar Billy Graham against Bruno San Martino for the belt in Madison Square Garden. Oh, yeah. And there's a special guest referee for this one. Gorilla Monsoon is the guest referee for this one. And this is just a complete wild match. It's just a wild match. Billy Graham, early in the match, goes underneath the ring, pulls out a rope, and, and Gorilla Monsoon takes the rope away from him. Then a couple minutes later, Bruno gets the rope and chokes Billy Graham, you know, around the neck with the rope. And then we see both men bleeding, and these guys are bleeding really good. Billy Graham decides he's going to leave the ring, he's going to leave this match is over. Well, Gorilla Monsoon comes back for him, carries him over his shoulder, back into the ring, and the fight goes on. And these guys keep fighting and fighting, and the more they fight, the more they bleed. And it got to the point where Gorilla Monsoon had to stop the match and call it a no contest because both men were bleeding too much. And believe me, these guys, you could see it on Gorilla's shirt. You could honestly see it on Gorilla Monsoon's shirt. They were bleeding a lot in that one. And then the finale. Hulk Hogan and Mr. T against Rowdy Rowdy Piper and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. The main event from the very first WrestleMania. Unless you just got into professional wrestling five minutes ago, I don't need to review this match. I think it's safe to say we all know what happens. We've all seen this match. And if you haven't seen it, just go pick up a videotape or a DVD that has this match on, and you'll see what happens. So, that's WWF grudge matches. What do I think about it? Well, I tell you, to be honest, to only have six rivalries on here, I think is actually pretty cool. You don't have so many that, you know, they all get lost in the shuffle. My only problems that I have with this is, number one, Hogan and Morocco. You only show one match of theirs. You couldn't show a second one? You know, the way that that match went, I thought it deserved a second match on this tape. Um, number two, Gorilla Monsoon getting his information wrong, but it's the Gorilla, I'll let it slide. And number three, why did we... Well, we needed more old school footage. I'd like to have seen another match with Bruno San Martino and Superstar Billy Graham or Bruno and Ivan Koloff. But I think they picked the right rivalries with Junkyard Dog and Terry Funk and Tito Santana and Greg Valentine as the um, multiple parters, I guess you can say, on this one. So, in conclusion... This is a tough call. Um, you know, I'm going to say it's an okay tape. 
It's not the best tape. It's not the worst. You do a good job producing this tape, but it could have been a little bit better when the title of it is Grudge Matches. So all in all, if you want to get it, I'm not going to stop you. If you don't want to get it, that's fine with me. Won't hurt my feelings. Um, so unless you are, you know, one of those people that's a collector and that likes to collect stuff like this, then if you want to get it, go get it. If you don't want to get it, it's totally fine. I have no problem. Well, that does it for this edition of the Retro Review. And I want to tell everybody real quick that to check out my YouTube page because in the next 48 to 72 hours, you're going to get to do something that's never been done in the almost two-year history of the Retro Review. What is it going to be? Well, you'll have to tune in either Tuesday or Wednesday to find out what it is. This has been the Retro Review.